What is the true valuation of Manchester United? What could the Glazers actually expect to get? We're seeing crazy numbers as high as 10 billion that's been priced on Manchester United so far and numbers as low as 2, 3 billion. Where's the real valuation? What can the Glazers actually expect to get? I'm going to run through that in this video using an excellent article from Swiss Ramble using different actual financial models to give a true valuation of Manchester United so we can actually understand what the real figure is and what United is worth and what the Glazers can actually expect to get. So make sure you please drop a like on this video. It's really confusing, trust me. And I'm trying to help you understand it all. Because look, it's been a while now since we've had and seen this announcement from Manchester United back in November that we were looking to explore strategic alternatives. And at that time, Manchester United announced that Ross Child & Co were acting as the exclusive financial advisors to the Glazer family. Now, it will be Ross Child & Co who effectively tell, Manchester, tell, tell the Glazers Manchester United is worth x now as i said because we've got the likes of dubai and saudi and other uae uh, members linked with by manchester united the numbers have been inflated massively and that's why this uh, this article from swiss ramble if, if you haven't followed swiss ramble i recommend you do over on twitter fantastic but his article here in terms of what manchester united is actually worth offers us some real insight and tries to help us understand truly what's going on and what the sort of conversations are that Rothschild and co are going to be having with the Glazers in terms of what Manchester United genuinely is worth. Now, look, I don't need to give you a history lesson into how bad the Glazers ownership has been for Manchester United, but we'll quickly run through it here in terms of why now, why, why would they sell now? Look, the Glazers, you know how much they've taken out of this club. Look at all this interest payments. Over a billion has left our football club on, over, on servicing that debt. On dividends, look, the dividends have obviously stopped next year, but look, 21 million roughly from 2007, 2016 onwards. Obviously, it went down in COVID, but it went up the year after. They have pillaged the club. And the reason of them selling now, I remember when this came out, you know, people tried to associate it with Ronaldo, and it absolutely made me want to bang my head against a brick wall. Just everything that they've done in terms of an ownership, it's gone now. That... Is written down there by a uh, swiss ramble but that's exactly what it is the glazers have had the easy growth we've seen the broadcast revenue we've seen that absolutely jump and it might go up slightly again but the huge jumps from where they took over here to where it is there that jump's not going to be happening again and actually on a game by game basis because more games are being involved in the packages it's actually going down which i found quite interesting i didn't quite, I didn't quite realize that in terms of the european tv revenue well, unless you invest heavily now, that's just not as easy as it once was. And we know full well the Champions League is where all the money is. You can see that in Manchester United's um, financial records over the years. And in terms of commercial revenue, I've been saying this for a long old time. Just people haven't been speaking about it enough. Woodward was good up until a point. And that point was around about 2016, where it just started to flatline. And Manchester United have never grown since then. They, have, they can't take this club forward. Look, match day revenue. It obviously, it went down because of COVID, went back up, but it's peaked. It's peaked at £110 million. And it won't go up until we get a new stadium and we get new investment. But that's not going to happen with the growing debt. And look at that, man. It's I think it's around about just over a, bit, a billion, actually, in terms of, look, it's got financial debt, transfer debt. It's, it's scary how much debt is on this football club. It really, really is. And if you're looking at the gross debt, that's the debt there that the Glazers have actually put on the club. It's near. It's more than when it was when they took. They actually took over the club, and it still is. The numbers. Uh, it's ridiculous, and this is actually the scariest one. The fact that the cash balance is so low. Look how low that cash balance is. In two thousand and nineteen, we had over three hundred million cash, and now we've got twenty four. Wow, that's just disgusting. And in terms of why they're selling, look, ESL collapsing. The Chelsea sale obviously showing how much they could get. Obviously, Liverpool announcing it as well. But look, what I want to run through here are the different sort of financial models that Swiss Rambles applied to try and understand the true valuation of it. I've ran through all the numbers there to explain exactly how bad it has been for such a long time. But it reaches the point now of saying, look, right, if Rothschild and Co are putting a valuation on Manchester United, how do they do in that? And he's got six different models down here. Market capitalization is the easiest model. That's simply... 
Okay, how much is the share? How much is the, the shares share price in the market? Right, twenty-one point nine dollars. How many shares are there? One hundred sixty-four million. Right. Okay. Quick maths. Let's put those two and two together, and that's going to give you there at the latest share price three billion. But if you go down here, you can see that that changed. If you want to go to the all-time high, you're only going to get a value of around about three and a half billion. If you're going to go to the down because of the exchange rate, and that's going to massively change all of these. The, the one thing I would say before we dive into all the numbers here, everything is so subject to change and everything is pretty subjective as well. And the concept of these is that they have to be, they can, they can and have to be objective. They take away a little bit of opinion. They kind of just bring the facts and the figures and the numbers. But it basically depends on which model you go for because the, you just get wildly different valuations. Enterprise value, which is the second one down there, which makes more sense, is... When you go down here, that's market capitalization plus the net debt, which means that anybody who would buy Manchester United would take on that debt and that will be absorbed into the value of the club, which of course puts the value of Manchester United up at an all-time high value from a share price perspective, plus the debt, it will go 4.22 billion. Now you'll remember, of course, I've spoken about this previously, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he bought Twitter at a premium. He bought Twitter at an over market price in terms of adding whether it was future growth or something like that and that's why he actually tried to pull out of the deal and why they took him to court and eventually they got they have they got Elon Musk to pay that price which was I think over $33 because that was the market price if I'm correct so that one there again if, if all these wild valuations we and numbers we're hearing about six seven eight billion even even by the highest measure on that one including the debt so that's market capitalization plus the debt it's only 4.2 billion and you go down here and you see discounted cash flow. Uh, but this one's kind of getting kind of getting dismissed. Basically, this discounted cash flow is written down there. It forecasts the future cash flow and it's sort of minus the cost of capital. But it's not particularly good when associating with football clubs. So this was pretty much um, just a, a visualization from Swiss Ramble. Not saying that this would be used as the model to value United, but just to understand that this is another different method. And down according to this method, a value of 2.4 billion uh, and down in the same concept here for profit mul multiples because Manchester well, football clubs do have let's be honest up and down massively up and down years depending on how much has gone in XYZ so this one is kind of dismissed as well and it comes down to the next one instead of profit multiples it will be revenue multiples and now this is where Manchester United are pretty consistent if I go up here and I was to look back at the likes of these numbers where are they? Commercial revenue, pretty consistent. Match day revenue, well, it would be pretty consistent. Man United's revenues are quite consistent. So in terms of a, a fair representation of how much that club can make, yeah, sure, it takes that into account. It doesn't really take debt into account. And it goes down here, and this, this, is, this is a very interesting one down here. This is a lot of numbers on the screen, but let me try and explain these to you. These are this is the multiplier down here. This is this is the really important column. Let me see if I can pull up my pull that up. No, don't want that. Get rid of all of those. Down here, right. So you can see that. The multiplier. So that is what that's doing here is let's go down here. We've got the where is it? The revenue is this column here. And the multiplier would be how much is that come is that football club valued at divided by the revenue that's going to be the multiplier and the average in the league is 5.3 so if manchester united were to do that and we were looking at man united's revenue there on an assumption basis of being 600 million then you're looking at a valuation of around 3.4 billion which again is substantially lower than any of these wild figures that we're hearing substantially lower and it's that this this is a really interesting point here the premium manchester united would effectively have to put a premium of 50 percent on the revenues of the football club to get that valuation above five billion and this is something i think the glazers would do and that's something that we'll take into account right to, right at the end of this video whilst after we look at the final valuation model here and that's this interesting one Mult markham multivariate model uh, look, developed by some guy called Tom Markham, who's now director at Wigan. Look at this, this is, an, this is a really interesting one. It's proved to be very accurate on occasions. Gave a value of 301 million for Newcastle when it was sold for 305. 
But of course, this just confuses everything because they massively overpaid for Chelsea. Uh, and it goes down there and using this model, <laughs> makes me laugh. I, I shouldn't laugh because it's not even slightly funny. But according, because Manchester United's finances are in such a bad position, the 2020, using the 20, 2022 figures, the valuation's 800 million. And even using the best of figures and making some positive assumptions, it only goes up to 2.5 billion. So if you look, if you go look, you can go on Forbes and see the fact that we're worth 4.6 billion according to them. And there's what's it, K, KPMG, they've got it down as 2.45. You can see here just how wild the fluctuations are in the prices using all these different models of valuing Manchester United as a football club, di different, well used, established models of figuring out the value of a company when it's going to be sold. Market capitalization, bet somewhere between three and three and a half billion. Enterprise, which includes the debt, market capitalization plus net debt, um, 3.6 to 4.2 billion. Discounted cash flow, which you, yeah, we're not taking that into account, 2.3. But you'll see here, there's only one there that sneaks above 5 billion. And that's a huge, huge premium. And effectively, the takeaway from this, in my opinion, has to be that if Manchester United are going to be sold for in excess of 5 billion, it's going to be a massive premium and it's going to be an overpayment by whoever buys it. And, the, and I think the Glazers will be using Chelsea as an example. And look, right now, the Phoenix Suns have just been sold for in excess of $4 billion. But the Glazers are greedy. I don't need to tell you that. But as the excellent Swiss Ramble has shown here, according to all the established financial models, it's very difficult to put a value of even $5 billion on Manchester United, let alone what they would want, which would probably be in excess of $6 billion. If they get that, they're just simply putting a number and putting a number on it and putting it out of thin air. Because Man United is not worth that at this particular moment in time. It'll be interesting to see how this continues to develop. But I hope this, I'm learning at the same time as you're learning, by the way. So I hope you have learned something from this video. Big shout out to Swiss Ramble, as I said, one more time for doing this, sorts of re this sort of research to try and help us gain a bit of insight into what's going on behind the scenes. But these are the sorts of conversations that Rothschild will be having with the Glazers in terms of valuing Manchester United. And this, I suppose, is part of the process and maybe why it's slightly delayed. Because I don't think the Glazers are going to get anywhere near as much as they actually want to, not according to the actual financial models that value businesses. But in terms of how much they just ask for, they might get into a bidding war and get exactly what they want. Fuckers. But it would eventually mean that Manchester United gets sold. So that I'm just happy about. So make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to United People's TV. I'll see you soon.